Yo, 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 what's good? It's your boy, Neek Bay, And it's his lovely wife, Charmaine Bay. <laughs> yes, yes. Look, welcome to the podcast. Today, we're joined by the iconic Miss Faith Evans. You can't just say iconic. You gotta, you gotta like I'm roll the rest. Okay. <laughs> I hear that before. I gotta, I gotta use that. Hey, you, and bionic. You gotta roll the red carpet out. It's Faith motherfucking Evan. Okay, why don't you start it off there? Because you, you, you got a good little vibrato <laughs> in your voice. We are with more than this than just the iconic. We are with the legendary. Very legendary. She is a household name. Okay, some of y'all grew up on her, and some of you. Not only did you grow up on it, but your mama love her too, okay? Definitely. <laughs> it is someone that has been a household name since I, my entire life. The Faith Evans. Is Grammy, Grammy winning singer, okay. songwriter, actress. She sold over what? 10 been million doing... records? No, no, no. You had, 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 uh, had a lot of top singles. I mean, Yo, your career is see the funny thing about this thing is that obviously this is marriage and mirage we talk about marriages and mirage marriages but you're such an icon wait that, what's the title marriage, marriage or, or mirage, mirage. Uh, but i came on here because i like y'all and <laughs> she said i didn't know what i was signing up for but well, it's okay. I'm here. Uh, look, but that's that's that's, that's what I, that's what I was gonna say because <laughs> you're such an icon that there's no way we can just go right into that. We really want to go into your life, your career, and honestly, like marriage and mirage is about relationships, also mm -hmm. in general. And you've you've had a lot of impactful relationships, yeah. in the culture, popular culture, music culture, all of that. So. Mm -hmm. it's, it's 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 <laughs> you, said, you said not a lot. I know what he said a lot. I'm like, bad you, relationships you know, as in obviously relationships have happened to be, yeah. We talking about friendships, we talk about, you know, you know, companionship, exactly. like relationships right. in general. You've been in the game yeah. killing it. So um I we gotta understand who Faith Evans is because obviously we've been a fan for you for so long, fan of you for so long, but to have you here is like we, we want to treat you like family where we can learn about you and have our audience learn about you and things that they may not have known on a personal know. level you know because we friends yeah. you're <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but I thought it was I thought it was so interesting that you actually started off as a background singer is that true for Mary J no is that, no. Is that a do people myth? say that I have heard that but if you, FYI, my um first my first uh bio biography, my book came out in uh, what about eighteen years. It's been a while, but mm -hmm. no, I was never a background singer. But I did um write songs on Mary's My Life album and Usher's um first album. But during mm -hmm. that time, that's when I was negotiating my deal with Bad Boy. Okay. So I had already been like doing songs with Al B. Shore, Christopher Williams, but every time Puff had me come in and write something, they ended up keeping my vocal. So okay. you will hear my background vocals Got on those it. that I wrote. So there I wasn't really a background singer. Right. So when I wrote yeah. these parts on these songs and I sang my demo parts, right, the references. he always kept my background vocals. Okay. So like Ashanti and J Lo, you know, they be Not singing quite. a J because <laughs> they be singing the J Lo song, no, no, but it's no, really Ashanti. Okay. It's really but, Ashanti. Well, yeah, but not. Nah. Yeah, but not. Nah. <laughs> she writing. I don't know. She got the references. I no, I'm saying no, no, no. no. no it makes I'm sense. Saying, You're right. Writers to Ashanti to J Lo, but I'm saying Puff would just like, hey, I need a, I need a bridge, I need a verse, I need a hook. And I would go in there and put that part down, and he would always keep my backgrounds because I was very, you know, on point with stacking my stuff and arranging stuff. So, right. you know, you would That's hear my fun. voice, which I would kind of probably, which would be one of your other questions or anything people used to think that, oh, they, you know, even when I came out, because my album came out 
after people heard me on Mary's stuff, they thought, oh, they sound alike. Well, you heard my voice on that album, so maybe there is a similarity in that and the production because Puck produced that and Puck produced my shit too. So I, I, I love Puck that we also went that. to Howard, by the way. We went to Howard. I went to Fordham, though, but hey, Howard. <laughs> you, I, I, I'm sure you, can, you went to the homecoming a few times. Did uh, you ever? Did, did you, you ever go to Howard Homecoming? Man, did I? When Big and Craig Mack performed. I got so many stories, but, you know, that's other stories. <laughs> we we going to get into that. Yeah, so, me used to drive down to Howard Homecoming, like, when Big and Craig performed. Like, there was a few times we drive down there, like. That's sick. You, up, like, can you give I us a legendary. Like, oh. <laughs> <All right. laughs> can you give us a legendary Howard story just for our Howard family? Because Homecoming's coming up. And, you know, we're all buying our tickets and getting our hotels. And we always post pictures of Biggie at homecoming. I mean, that's just. But nobody know, like, the real. Well, come like, on. What was the... Still do that. Well, the one, the one most memorable, most memorable time I went, that post office that they had the show in the post office. There used to be a post office. It might have still been at the time. Do I think you know that was under, that the, under the A building. Wow. I think under the A building. It was inside this big ass like atrium building, mm. and Craig and Big performed in there. That's the one that I remember the most. That's sick. But I don't so even cool. know if they, you know, I mean, who does that? Like, how they are... actually had a show inside the big ass post office building, like in DC. So cool. It was that's, great. That's... Yeah, absolutely love how we wasn't even speaking at the time. But right. I pulled up. <laughs> I heard that you, you, you pulled up because you heard you heard how it get down and how it was coming. You was like, <laughs> like "Are you going? I'm going with you." Okay, that's hilarious. So funny. So we want to know all about Faith Evans. Obviously, we know the things that have been in the media, you know, during our lifetime. But we want to know more about you and like how you were raised and what your childhood was like. What the hell? I was born in Lakeland, Florida. Okay. Mm. And when I was six months old, I moved to North New Jersey. Jersey. Let's go. I love to hear that. I'm I'm from Elizabeth. Okay, what happened? Big city? You from the big city? Okay. I moved there when I was six months old. My mom was still in 12th grade. Like, Mm. so um, my, my cousins who had bought a house in Jersey, but I call them my grandparents because they were older than my mother and they wanted to, you know, bring me to Jersey until my mother graduated and she came to Jersey shortly after. But I was raised in North New Jersey. Wow. And, That's uh, so cool. About, I'm going to say when I was like five years old, they started raising foster children. Mm. and so. Throughout my life, I think they raised over like a hundred, hundred and fifty foster kids. You know, and they were the what? Time. And they I were all in. living in the home that you were living in, well, like not at the same damn. Time. Yeah, not at the, not at the same. Time. Right, but there was just <laughs> right. But, but no, they would just, come in and right. you know there were filter never, through. Let me say this: there were never less than okay. Once they started, you know, okay, not even once. At the fullest time in the house, there was. Definitely at least 12 people living in this house. And this was a three bedroom house, but my grandfather, rest in peace, he um, finished the basement to make three more bedrooms. Wow. <laughs> so, so <laughs> and your mom um, was living there too. Yeah, in addition to the foster children they were raising, there were other family members that might have been relocating or transitioning from the South or in the service, you know, and I remember even family, I'm like, now that I think about it, how the hell did we all? Wow, right. <laughs> and, are, happened. and are the, so your I mom was, was always all... doing something. I had to sing somewhere, child. Right. <laughs> Church, school, like a pageant. And, and your mom was living there too. <laughs> well, no, once my mom mm-hmm. moved up there, she lived in the house shortly, but she had her own place. You were know, you close so, yeah. to the, um, did y'all, were y'all like siblings? You're the foster kids? Oh, yeah. Well, they still yeah. my cousins. Wow. The ones they adopted, you know, that's my sister. 
You know what wow. I mean? But we all cousins. I got five thousand cousins. Oh in my goodness! To my, 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 so. That's so cool. And and biologically, you would be the only child. Well, I have a sister, Janelle. Okay. Okay. She's thirteen years younger than me, though. So we okay. didn't grow up in the same house. Wow. You know. Wow. Yeah, that's so but cool. I, I went to, um, I ended up, I was always very academically inclined in addition to having my musical gift. So I ended up going to school. I went to an elementary school that was actually like not in my neighborhood. It was in the project, but they had a a program for gifted, what they call gifted and talented, but it was, you had to test into that school. Very cool. So I remember kind of, you know, always not having issues, but knowing that not only am I this, you know, the colorism thing, this light skin girl that look white mm. and I'm in the smart class and I'm always singing in all these. Uh, mm. And I can sing, right. So people were hating on me forever. But then wow. I had a cousin that was my foster cousin that grew up in that neighborhood, like, and they waiting outside. We're not telling somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Then yeah. the other people have to be my cousin. So <laughs> Right, right. They didn't want no problems with you. Right. Not, not one. <laughs> Tell us about your not musical one. gift because you, you told us that early on you had this musical gift. So when did you catch on to this and like how did it flourish? Um, well, I think I probably knew I could sing. I, well, as far as I can remember, when I was like two two or three years old. I used to, my favorite cartoons was the Jetsons and the Flintstones. Okay. So I remember this episode on the Flintstones when Bam Bam and Pebbles and they performed and they sang this song. So let the sun shine in. So my auntie, oh my gosh, she just passed. My auntie Pee Wee, oh. rest in peace. That's but so she, um, she made me get up in front of the church and sing, and that was the song I sang, the song mm-hmm. from the Flintstones. Oh and I was so shy, you know. I I sang the song like this, <laughs> and uh-huh. ran straight out the door afterward. <laughs> like I was so like, <laughs> right. But that was my debut at probably two or three years old, singing the song from the Flintstones in church. So That's I nice. definitely always knew I had a singing gift, but later on. You know, I realized that my gift of writing in school and poetry and all of that stuff, writing good stories, you know, it it married and morphed into me writing songs, you know? Oh my God, so cool. Oh, now that, so that, that, cool. That's amazing. So like, besides the Flintstones, like what was your like, <laughs> musical influences? Okay, me. Because <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, but that was a good story. What would you say is your your musical influences as far as like artists where it gave you that same type of feeling? Like you saw them singing that song in the Flintstones, but now you got this other musical artist. That, well, you know, like who who did? Here's it? the thing. My mom was this is this early seventies. She's a teenager. She's in the South in Florida. My mother was the only black person in this whole white band, okay? And she was the band leader. So she used to hitchhike to her shows. And I've heard stories like, you know, that they would sometimes tell them they can't perform with a black person. And they was like, well, we can't perform because she's our leader. (laughs) My mother is known as a damn go-getter, fucking renegade back in days in Florida. (laughs) Wow. So, so fucking dope. obviously, you know, the gift from God came through her. She just never really got to, you know, establish and re- and live out all of all of those things. But she was a damn go getter. So mm-hmm. all of me, like, you got to get my book. Like, me yeah, speaking, no, we getting it book. tonight. So, what's what's well, the name? Stuff comes from obviously my mother. Like, what's, what's the, the name, name of, of it? Stuff? Keep the fucking faith. The fuck? Keep the, <laughs> is is, 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 is fucking in there or seller, baby? Come on! Is is keep the fuck? Is fucking in there or is it just keep the faith? <laughs> okay, keep I the faith. Pop the books. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We we're, we're talking about. We're gonna, we're gonna have a couple of the, uh, copies in the crib yeah. before this interview goes out. Up. So 
No, nah, no, nah, we want to nah, buy. Nah, we go buy. We go buy. We want to buy them, but we gonna need you because you live in LA, right? We gonna need you to sign. Yeah, we gonna we gonna pull up on you, or you can pull up on us one of these days. Okay. We'll get, we get a little nice little signature. Because we go, we gonna need to sign them, but we still want to support and yeah, buy. We'll em. give you a third copy for the eBay. Reading this sometimes on the plane, just going back to certain things to laugh at myself, like bitch, yeah. what the fuck was you thinking? <laughs> Thank God it wasn't on social media. Oh I'm man, I don't know. Coming in with right, the now. hoodies and the scullies on, like <laughs> okay. Man, I can only. I, yeah, I, I wish I could got, be a fly on the wall. Hip hop gems up in that book, huh? Yes, she probably got some, some hip hop gym max. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you probably got stuff in there that's happening in your lifetime. Well, you probably have stuff that's not in there that's happening in your lifetime that oh, you're yeah, just gonna take it to like, the grave. You no, know you gotta write another book. <laughs> Is there anything that you just, I mean, obviously you're not going to tell me what it is, but are there things that you're just going to take to the grave like no one will ever know? Well, I don't know. I mean, there's things I left out of my book. Like, you know, certain things were big, you know, that, okay, that's not necessary to, you know, there's, yeah, it's yeah. not so much that it's hiding something, but that wasn't necessary. Like I don't, I told the basis of it, like all right. these little things in between don't matter. Like, you know? Right. Absolutely. Just even out and of respect. About every and every yeah. Day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Cause you, you guys were, were young as hell at that, at that point too. Very that young. And so much happened in so little time, you know? Yeah. People don't understand. So much, like such a little you... bit of time. Let me tell you something about me. Yeah. And, any of my friends, my friends that got deals, my friends that I, one of my friends, one of my best friends is like, you always told me, don't ever fucking act different because you got a deal. Don't act like you don't know nobody. Like, <laughs> like you always been the same motherfucking fizzy. Like, right. I'm That's just what saying, you I didn't come into it that way. So, I mean, I didn't probably elaborate on the whole story of everything, me getting into it, but I never took myself that seriously. I know so fucking many talented people that nobody may not ever hear them sing or, you know, I sang so many places. I just wanted to make money with my gift. It wasn't about I want to be, that was like a very long shot to me. I read through every album cover. My mother sang in a white band, so she had, she sang records from the mamas to the papas to Earth, Wind, and Fire to Joan Baez. Like, it wasn't just black music. And I just used to sit at her house and read the album covers and just look at the... If I saw one with the description of this and it's the same name, like, a, for example, a Patrice Russia, writer, producer, arranger, da-da-da-da. And it, something about that stuck out to me. Not saying that I ever thought I would be those things, but I also had a gift in... When I met Puff, guess what? I was already producing myself, arranging stuff. And I was there actually the day that I went, okay, here's a story. My, my daughter, China's father, Kayama Griffin, he was a part of a production company with Vincent Herbert, who oh, most okay. people know. They were yeah. called Three Boys from Newark. And um, I was in Fordham. I was in college at the time. Ran into Kayama in Penn Station, going to school. He's like, "Oh, you still sing?" Because I used to. We had competitions with his his high school band. I was the jazz singer. I mean, the singer in my jazz band from my high school. That's in addition to singing at church and doing weddings and funerals and bar mitzvahs. Like I sang every damn week. Right, but. I also used to sneak out the house to go to the studio and produce myself and write my little, like, I was doing shit. Nobody would ever fucking, the songs that would never see the light of day. But I was learning how to do these things that I never knew would actually serve me well. You know, I never knew that would be my career. It's amazing. But I was very proficient at these things. So I, through him, I met Christopher Williams. I started going by the studio. I met Albie Shore. And then when I met Al, thank God for him, shout out to him and Christopher Williams, Al started paying me just to come and lay down vocals to his songs. Wow. wow. That he wrote. I didn't even have to write them. So you're just engineering. To this day, he called me the doctor. Hey, doctor. 
because I would go in there and, fix and look some at shit. his lyrics and arrange that shit and put my harmonies and stack mm. and this should go there. And so this is before I had a record deal, you know? This was just <laughs> a hobby to me. Right. A gift from God. Thank you, God. But I'm just saying, Al actually paid me to do this shit when I was on welfare. He told me, wow. come every day. <laughs> like, I got you. Right. And wow. so maybe about a month or two later, maybe a few months later, my baby daddy reappeared and he mm. needed a ride to the studio because he was trying to get a placement on Usher's album with Puck. So I drove okay. him to the studio. I had my baby in the lounge mm-hmm. and... They was like, Puff needs somebody to sing this line to this song. And they was like, oh, Mama could sing. That was, they called me Mama. So I went in there, Mr. Puffy, can I change it around? I did my little shit. Soon as I came out the booth, he was like, yo, do you want to sign to my new, new label? Like, no I didn't way. Go there. I was going to ask, was Puff like, like, did everybody know Puff yet at that moment? Or did he just get, was well, he just he working was at the label? I didn't know, I didn't know him like that. I was a church girl. Mm. I'm just saying, I mean, there's so many layers to this story. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know him. But at the same time of this going on, Misa, who's Puff's son, Justin's son, yeah, yeah, Justin's yeah. mother. Misa used to come to my church when we were teenagers because her first cousin, was best friends with my cousin. So they used to be like, oh, that's um, Puff Daddy's girlfriend. I didn't know who Puff Daddy was. But when I finally hooked up and got this deal with Puff, I already knew Misa. So we kind of, she was kind of my confidant and friend when I actually started, you know. But before that, I was already working with Al, you know, around Mm -hmm. Chris and just... Even when if I wasn't around them, I was doing what I do. Like, right. So, That's so when cool. I met her, he immediately asked me, do I want to sign to his label? I'm there dressed like a fucking... <laughs> sister act. Not sis- you know what? Bye. <laughs> My boy like... Um, <laughs> fuck you, me. <laughs> But like an executive, not like someone that's trying okay, to get a Okay, okay, okay. You look like a boss. I had a fans, you know. I had that's a new one baby, y'all. <laughs> right, right. This is my how, baby in the lounge. Like, how hard was, was it? I'm seeing the line. <laughs> right. Well, how, and that how line, was, how, me changing it and arranging it, turned into me getting a record deal with Bad Boy, which is actually while I was, while I was working on that deal is how... He had me working on Usher's first album, Usher, right, and Mary's right. My Life album. So, but at the same time, I was familiar with Nisa. You know, my name was kind of going around in the industry in terms of just me putting my vocals down because Al B. Shore wanted to sign me too at the time. Mm. But you know, I wasn't. That wasn't like, oh, I'm trying to get a deal. I'm just trying to make some money with my gift. <laughs> Right. I'm, I'm, I'm right. I'll tell you, I wrote a letter on line paper, Mr. Puffy. Can you pay me to come to the studio? <laughs> right. Like this was after the I fact or before? Here every day. Yeah. My shit's breaking down in the tunnel. <laughs> right. Damn. What, what tunnel. was his response to that? He, how much you want? <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Hello. <laughs> Knock knock, who's there? Now I'll be sure and Puff uh, hey, having a, a bidding war, right? I'll be sure and Puff having a bidding war over Faith motherfucking no, Evans. No, no, girl, it wasn't a bidding war. Because Not a bidding war, but you know day, they both wanted you. So after that day, I did tell Al like he asked. He was like, "Man, do your thing," but I still worked with Al, you right, know, throughout that during that time, you know, until Puff actually had me. Hey, come work on this Usher album. Come do this. But yeah. So Puff Daddy kind of changed your life. Huh? Puffy changed your life. Working with Puff. He definitely did. But I would say he changed my life to another degree. But shit, I was on welfare (laughs) and (laughs) food stamps when Al B. Shore said, Right. And no, my baby major. daddy stopped coming to the studio because he had somebody in Arizona. I didn't know. I'm mm-hmm. there trying to, you know, show up with my daughter for him to see her. 
And Al said, don't stop coming. Come every day, whether he was there or not. So, no, you that's know. pivotal. That's pivotal, especially because obviously oh. he's giving you, so he's paying you for your work. Again. <laughs> <laughs> that's the music that's game, though. That's the music <laughs> game. You got to, you got to, you got to keep pivoting the people that, that, that you got to be able to you. Hang, hang up. Right. <laughs> okay. So, oh, so what was, what was the timeline? Cause you got signed, like, were you, was it a good, a, a, the beginning of that, was you working a lot on everybody else's stuff? Obviously, cause you're talented in that. Or did you go right into like, album mode and, and figuring out like how you wanted to come out like your debut album like how how to go down no 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 actually like i said at that at when this is okay my daughter was born in 93 so between 93 and 94 i actually signed my deal me and big got married in 94 right so that was damn so you got your you got your deal signed in 93 or four i signed it in 94 but i was wow. you know probably met Puff in the, you know, somewhere in 93. Right, right. I was already working with Al when my daughter was born. So, mm. so, yeah. so Puff, Puff was like, okay, so you you got to just tell us the story. How, what was the first, how did you even see, obviously you seen Biggie because of Puff, but like, Mm-mm. was it love at first sight? Like, give us the this detail. Like, how... story. <laughs> we I didn't even know. Big. I met Big and the whole fucking Junior Mafia on this day that, minus Kim. Kim wasn't there, mm-hmm. but um, Puff was having a, because the Junior Mafia wasn't actually uh, established. Oh, they were, you know, I don't know if they had their deal at the time, but Big was right. signed. And so Puff was having a photo shoot for his artist, his, you know, I guess it was the a crew. little promo shoot for whatever artist he had at the time. Okay. And I came to the photo shoot, just left dropping my daughter off at Red Man's house because wow. Red Man's sister Rosalyn is one of my best friends. She used to keep China. Hurricane the hell? She what? was there. She asked me, could she ride with me to the city? And she was big at the time. Not big, but you know, she was popular at the time. Right, right. So I'm like, okay, I gotta go to this photo shoot. I'll drop you off in Brooklyn afterwards. <laughs> Just so happened, <laughs> I go to this photo shoot. Biggie was there. I think it was me, Big, maybe Craig Mack, and Total. I don't, maybe, I don't know. I don't remember who all ended up there. But this is the first time I met Biggie. I'm sitting at the table during the break. And I'm sure during this time, you know, as I look back, I'm like, these motherfuckers didn't know. Big thought I was like, uh, like you said, a, a studio singer. He said, he later on, he told me he used to see me going up and down in, in the studio at the Hit Factory. He didn't know I was on the label. You know what I'm saying? He didn't know I was signed to Bad Boy. But I was sitting there looking at my pictures. You know how back in the day you pick up your pictures from the photo mat? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the phone number on the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's talking to me. He's like, oh, you got a daughter? I was like, hey, yeah, I do. I do, too. He's like, can you take me home? But he probably had already talked to Hurricane G, who's a popular rapper. Like, mm-hmm. think, how the fuck she know her? You know what I'm saying? Right. right. I know right. her because that's Redman, homie, and Redman's my nigga and not my nigga, but you know what I'm saying? That's yeah, my yeah, brother yeah. and his sister's yeah. keeping my daughter. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. And I told her I'll take him to Brooklyn. So he asked me, could I take, drop them off in Brooklyn? But I didn't know it was him and like, Fucking seven motherfuckers. Uh, <laughs> oh, nah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then I took them back and I dropped them off. He said, I'm going to call you, but I never gave him my number. But he seen my number on the fucking photo thing and he yeah. actually called me the next day. Did so he? That's how we, yeah. That's how what, we got there. What was the first day? What I was the first day? How you know your way around Brooklyn? I'm like, well, I be going to Hezekiah Walker Church. <laughs> I'm <a laughs> Hezekiah well, I'm in Brooklyn like the back of my hand. <laughs> That's so funny. He was a good, good, good <laughs> well, he girl. Never drove. They ain't have a car. Right, I did. New York. Niggas, niggas in, in New Brooklyn York don't drive. His neighbor, in his neighborhood. Every day after that, like. Ah, oh, that's so cute. What, what What was the first date he took you on? 
uh, me coming over there, and it was all <laughs> the <laughs> so the, first, the, first the, the first date was at the time, crib. Every time after that, it was the same thing. Like, really? And, and even sees any of them would tell the same. Oh my God, rest in peace, Chico. He just Chico just passed away yeah, um, yesterday from Junior Mafia, and he's kind of like the you know the OG of Junior Mafia, and uh, you know he was it was you know he. I used to go every day. To this day, they'll be like, Dizzy used to come up. She'll be on the block like, yo, what's up? Where y'all at? I'm outside. <laughs> oh, my God. You was the homegirl. You know I went up there to be with him in his little back room in his mother's house? All of them was there. Like, Yeah, bro, you was the homegirl. Y'all, y'all was y'all was kicking it heavy. Like, I want to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now, was you always attracted to like bigger dudes? Obviously, Biggie's like the coolest, biggest, you know, the coolest. A in terms of a, okay. that, I like great people. You know what I mean? Right. Big personality is one you can't, of course, ever not love. And like I said, back to him when he said he gonna call me and I ain't give him my number, and he and called he you, got my shit. Like I was like. Yeah, oh, that something you know, about that yeah, right there. Yeah. yeah. When a man moves that way. He has so much confidence. <laughs> oh, yes. That's what attracted me to my husband. Like, when I asked you, how many girls do you need to have sex with before you just want to be with me in a relationship? Because, I, I you know. What did I say, 50? No, you said. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> no, Why me? no Why that's me? not what you said. I, I remember you asked that. He basically told me none. Like, like basically, like, kind of looked at me sideways, like, girl, none. Like, yeah, I thought it was a trick question. <laughs> I don't have enough of that. It wasn't. <laughs> yeah. I would know it. I just didn't want to, like, be led on. And I didn't want to, like, think this was more than what it was. It was like, okay, we had a great time together these last couple of days. You're finna go back to Jersey. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you're gonna go fuck hoes, that's cool. But that's like, man. how many hoes you gonna fuck before <laughs> it's just me and you? And he told me none. And we, and that's basically when we started dating. Yeah. Y'all are that's so right. cute. And your daughters are absolutely beautiful, even though they look Thank I you. feel like they even though they look like him, but you, you, it's a Thank good compliment, you. girl. Thank I know. You. I know. And we know you're telling the truth because you're a very honest person. <laughs> so um, I, I agree with you. I do think they look like me too. Um, in the beginning, it was a little rough. They kept saying Steph Curry, but uh, 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 now, <laughs> I know you see that. I know you see that. But now, uh, oh, now, now people I'm ain't stupid. <laughs> I'm not gonna play with him you no know more. They know those are my kids. They know I'm those are my kids. Right there, I'm not gonna play with him. My babies will be awake. <laughs> that is so funny. Hey, they sleep. We we ain't gonna bother them. Babe, I want to ask you because I lost people that I love, and do you ever dream about Biggie? Do you ever have dreams about him? I wouldn't particularly say that. I actually laugh with me, you know, mm -hmm. when I be doing some shit or some shit happening, I'll be like, I know you laugh. I know for a fact that if big was here, we would be the best of friends. If we weren't together, you know, if we never tried to get back together, we would totally be the best. Of friends. The King and I album that I did, we would have done that shit together if he was alive, you know? Like, he he was a smart dude, and he actually used to ask me questions and, you know, about how I dealt with business and, you know, how I do, you know, how you do that. I'm like, cuz, I ain't fuck that. I ain't, that. I ain't taking that shit. You know what I'm saying? He had a whole thing about that. We, I was never in his sessions. Like, Big had, Big was signed to Bad Boy, when Puff was still at um, Uptown, you know what I'm saying? So it was his. It was a different thing. Like he just wanted to get some money, and he, he had a baby. You know, that was his thing. He ain't looking into all that. As long as I'm getting something, is more than what the fuck I was doing. You know, and it's better than getting it on the streets. Whereas me, 
I'm happy to be doing this too, but I ain't doing some shit that don't make sense for me either. <laughs> Never. Mm, right. <laughs> right. Not right. from the first day. <laughs> okay. I'm saying like, for example, for example, let me just clarify. Um, A lot of people know about that big bad boy tour back in the day when Puff took everybody on tour. Tra- I think it was a lot of artists, like Naughty by Nature, da, da, da. And they went on this big tour. And at the time, I had an album out. I had a gold single, a, a platinum single, a gold album. And <laughs> me and Big were separated, but they wanted me to go on this tour. Right. And they said, oh, it's for promo. That means for mm. fucking free. Hello. Oh, God. Now what? And I'm going right. on, I'm not even on a tour, but I'm getting to do shows, two shows a weekend. I'm at the very least getting $10,000 a night at the time, you know, for That's to do major two songs. Right. You know That's what I'm major. saying? Why the fuck am I going to go on a tour for free, free. with right. my husband who I'm not fucking with. married to, but he got a <laughs> mistress a girlfriend the fuck i will be fucking some shit up and like come on now (laughs) aside from that let's talk about the free part hello (laughs) i want to talk about the mistress i got two fucking kids at the time right (laughs) no way am i going to do shit for free and okay so i also want to ask you your baby father before your your baby father what China's you, dad. China's father um can you like tell us a little bit about him and y'all's relationship and like why why it did not work out at the time well I can't say we really had a ro- romantic relationship you know what I mean okay like I I Kayama went to school in Newark, and he was a, play, a keyboard player for the jazz band at his high school. I was a vocalist for my high school jazz band, but we weren't in the same school. He wasn't my age, but I happened to run into him when I was going to college in Penn Station, and he said, hey, do you still sing? I'm working with Christopher Williams. You know, you should come by the studio. I was like, okay, I might, and I went by there a few times, and um, I can't say a real relationship developed. Like, you know, I, I remember they were like, oh, I think he like you, da, da, da. And I feel like the first time we fucked around, I got pregnant. You know? Really? Wow, it was one of those situations. Second, but it wasn't many times, so. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so had to be the first time. <laughs> Either the first or the second, <laughs> right. So y'all Either just kind of was like a fling. It wasn't anything serious. And you end up getting pregnant. And how old were you at the time? Um, I was 19. This 19. Is my first, like, this is during the, right at the end of my first year of college. That's why I didn't, well, yeah, it's during my first year of college. So when I found mm. out I was pregnant, I didn't go to my second year, you right. know, okay. right. which I had a full academic scholarship to a major mm-hmm. university, you know? Right, right. He was like, oh, you should move to L.A. and da, da, da. It sounded better than, you know, living in Newark. I don't know. I did. <laughs> but I had my great-ass daughter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, period. Yeah. Okay, and nothing and can take that away. The funny thing is, before that, when I just, the Fordham thing was so God because I used to sneak out the window to go to this studio in the Bronx because I, I had a, I was in this gospel group when I was a teenager, and we did a couple of little records, you know. And the guy, how the guy's house was right there in the Bronx. So when I got, there, I was like, Jesus God, why did you? He kept, you know, he let me be right there at the same place when I used to sneak out the window to go. Wow! <laughs> like, listen, right around the corner. So, of course, I did that after my classes at Fordham. I'm still going to this studio because I'm learning how to actually produce myself. And and even if nobody ever fucking knows it. But one day they did. You know, look at God. Look at God. What are you doing? We learned how you met your baby's father. um, And then you You moved on. I met Biggie. Right. We learned how you met Biggie. And how was your relationship with Biggie? Like, you know. Obviously, you said he you 
are more of a personality person. We know that Biggie had a personality. So, you know, how did you interact with him? What did you love about Biggie? Everything. I loved everything about him, you know? And let me tell you something. We were so young and there was such a short span of time that we actually got to, um, that we even knew each other, let alone embrace and, you know, our love. Experience and, each other. You know, right. But um, Big is the reason why I, like, he was honest. You understand? Like, one thing about him, even at that young age, so, and I haven't had many relationships. Like, I was married most of my adult life. I got married to Big when I was 21. <laughs> I was married right after, you know, right after Big died. I married the same year, maybe nine months later. You know what I'm saying? I was only single in my adult life after I divorced my husband, Todd. That was like a five-year period before I married Stevie, who was my friend for 20 something years. You know what I'm saying? But guess what, big, honest, yo, I respect it. I'm like, I can't take nothing else. Okay, big is the nigga like, mm. yo, did you fuck her? He'll be like, yeah. And I'll be like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> like you expect a nigga to lie. You're like, right. yeah, I did. <laughs> You're like, how do you even tell her right now? She better not. How do you follow up to that? How do you I'll like find out? He wanna tell. I'd be like, you yo, did you fuck her? Yeah. Call her right now to the room. Tell her right now to come in. I'll tell her. <laughs> wow. Because you can't I mean, even be mad at him. You mad at her hey, at this point. He was honest as fuck. I mean, most of the time I ain't know what was going on, but when I did and I asked him, he told the truth. I'd be like, you know I'm a fucker up, right? <laughs> but don't, don't, don't fuck her up, though. Don't Forget fuck her that up. Bitch. <laughs> that is so amazing. So he, he loved his honesty the most. And that can That's be what like. I fucking love and miss and respect. And I know that, you know, we would be the best of friends. We still, we were. You know what I mean? He, he married the right person. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? For sure. Yeah, rest in peace to Biggie for show, man. That and, is, that's my nigga. <laughs> yeah. Can you I mean, share? that's why, I mean, even the spirit of that is why I think all the relationships, like, like I was saying, like when I met him, I met the whole mafia. Kim wasn't there because they weren't really um, recording. They weren't a recording group at the time, but I met all his niggas. I drove all of them home and they was just joking and trying to joke on me and I came back. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. Right. You from well, Jersey. You got to let her know. We do this in Jersey. <laughs> and I'm still cool with them to this day, you know. That's amazing. Very day. So you, you talked about how you had to deal with a lot of like, obviously Biggie's mistresses and different women and stuff like that. Like, Because <laughs> <laughs> I got say that. I you, you did say that. that. You, you, but you, what you, I can say. You, you did say that. Go ahead. You say what you want. No, no, I no, 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 you don't. That, that that tour, you say what, you... what I said was on that tour, <laughs> on he that had tour. a girlfriend and a mistress. That's what the fuck I said. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And you, you dealt with that. I didn't say okay. a lot of them. Because I could tell right. you about that too, but I did not. <laughs> okay, you you didn't say you didn't say a lot of them. She said at least I'm, one girlfriend and at least one mistress. I guess I'm right. assuming that that Biggie had a lot of girlfriends, a lot of chicks, just because he, well, he does that. Just because he's a rapper. Yeah, he's a rapper. What question is that leading to? So the question is leading to, <laughs> at what point did, because when we think about Biggie's relationships, obviously Faith Evans is boom. That's the, that's the cover. But you got Little Kim, who is one of the greatest female rappers. Like, right. what was the introduction Obviously, she could have been a friend or whatever case because she and that's tough. But well, what? How did that play a part in this whole, you know, relationship I with you and Big? Met, well, not even met. I first saw Kim at the Big Papa video shoot, mm. and and I was just again, you know, me and Misa, you know, used to just be coming. I knew he was. I'm supporting my husband, right. and 
I actually ended up, I'm in the video, but you can see the back of my head with this blonde platinum thing. Because Puff was like, I don't want you to be seen yet. I want you to be a mystery. <laughs> he was kind of mad. I don't know if he was mad, but I'm showing that up. Y'all were, that y'all were married? That you and, you and Biggie. Yes. Right, the more, not the one more chance, Big Papa. Big Papa, video. because Big Papa. Puff Puff didn't intro, Puff didn't like introduce you, like yo, this is fake. I knew, he right, be. right. Nonetheless, I kept asking because I'm already familiar with all the guys. I done been to Brooklyn every day, you know. Right, I was like, who that girl? <laughs> right. And he was like, that's Lil Kim. She in my group. That's how I first, and it wasn't a real introduction. But after that, right. I see Big. Encouraged me to be cool with him. Mm. Big encouraged me. <laughs> this that dumb shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. But but was that early early days? I like had before? No idea. Right? How would you actually? Like, how would you know? I had no we ever had a beef with him. I didn't know anything about her fucking with Big until she got on the radio <laughs> and started <laughs> going <laughs> and said me and Big was separated. <laughs> All respect for him. I just didn't know at the time. Of right. course, I didn't know my husband was fucking some anybody. <laughs> right, 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 right. Until I found out. <laughs> and then when you found out, uh, what went down? Like, was it? I mean, it did what it did. Life be life. <laughs> life be life. <laughs> so how, how'd y'all like? <laughs> <laughs> What's she saying? Niggas be bitching. <laughs> she, 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 fighters be fighting. <laughs> so you and Kim might have thrown some bows. Girl, before. it's in my book. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna read the we're gonna read the I book and do a part two know. update, y'all. We're gonna let we're gonna let <laughs> things happen, of course. Of course, of course, of course. But okay. Cause I they definitely, do. if I find out my husband sleeping yeah, yeah, with somebody yeah, else, let me fucking tell you, what I'm stumping this bitch to the ground. Hey, hey, hey. All right, women ain't bitches, man. What that this is one a, is? That is a woman. <laughs> um, let's let's do. I always knew before Kim was had blown up. You know, I always knew she was so. That had, I've been in sessions with Junior Mafia, like in the movie. You know what I mean? I think that was a great depiction. I was in this set, not in a lot of them, but the sessions I was in. Shit, yeah. I didn't know shit. I ain't know nothing was going on with them. Right. So, as you see, in, even in the Notorious movie, like, I left, and then they went through what they went through. I didn't know until I found out. So, I can't, you know, I can't shade her for that. That's what they had going on before he married me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I respect you as a woman just for... But it ain't my fault that he married me either. So, yeah. I can't, you know, I can't, you know, okay. At that time, of course, a bitch gonna be bitching. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I was on my bitch shit. Like, fuck that. that, 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 that. But, hey, it is what, mean, it what is. What, what, what is she supposed to? Of course you got it. And I was it. mad young, young too. You young as did hell. You, back then, did you feel That's like... I was climbing through windows and stuff. <laughs> Oh, did you feel like the studio or to beat a bitch ass one or the other like <laughs> right you for the you for brick saying, city you, you gotta that, represent I, like, what the fuck was i i was not thinking thank you god for being on my side because definitely did, did you feel fucking... <laughs> oh lord hell no nah. <laughs> back then did you feel that you were the better woman because you were the chosen one when it came to like I'm the wife, period. Never. I never, I I don't know. Then or now, I don't ever feel that way about myself. I know who I am with God. I know who I am within myself because I know who I am with God. So nobody else in terms of a man or a relationship, I don't do that. I don't walk my life comparing myself to people, comparing my walk or my existence to anything, but I'm, I know who I am. So no, I know, never, never. I love that because people cannot help it these days, especially with social media to compare well, girl, themselves. That's what I said. It wasn't around then, but even if it was, fuck a social media. I know mm -hmm. who the fuck I am. Right. Yeah. I'm not on that shit like that. I don't really care about, I don't even read comments and my, my faithfuls, 
that some of the ones that I actually talk to all the time, they'll be like, did you, I'm like, child, they be, they comment for me. Like, you know, she don't care about that. Right. <laughs> like, I got shit to do. Like, I have a whole fund with special needs who I actually have to dedicate most of my fucking not five percent of my time. <laughs> Tell us about your, your day-to-day life with your son and, and how old is he? And, you know, give us some details. My son yeah. Ryder is 16. And I mean, shit, for the, I, I actually, when Ryder was very young, before he was diagnosed, I, I had three kids that were older than him. So I'm like, something's not, you know, he wasn't talking and, you know, on the level of what I thought it should be, you know, compared to, and so oh, his kids. pediatrician at the time kept saying, wait, every child is different. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. But I got three of them motherfuckers in, right. you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I begged him to give me a diagnosis. I never had him tested and this and that. I'm like, I know. And then when I found out that, you know, the early, the early, uh, shit, the, the regional center in L.A. when you have a child with special needs, you know. The age of three, after the age of three is, before the age of three, you can get this early care thing, you know? So Mm -hmm. I was really begging for him to get diagnosed, but I was already putting him into programs to figure it, figure it out, you know, on my own before he was diagnosed. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a tough walk, you know? And And what was he diagnosed with? Well, with autism spectrum disorder. But through that, it's been such a, you know, it's such a different thing because that is such a, I would say, newly uh, discovered or talked about thing. You know what I'm saying? So, but not only that, but also the supports. You You don't know what your child needs if you don't know what's fucking wrong. You know what I'm right. saying? It's like, right. it's, it's a, a crazy thing. But, um, uh, shoot, by the time Ryder was maybe about four years ago, right before the pandemic, you know, I had gone through different schools and non-public schools and da 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 you know, through the school district. And I realized, like, no, this ain't working for him. So I pulled him out of the school district district schools right before the pandemic. So he's been privately homeschooled since then, but that's because of so many things. So through the pandemic, I was able to um, do some uh, shit. Hey, when I forget my words, I'm real smart. I did we some know, we know. Real smart, we know. I did <laughs> <some> <laughs> podiums <laughs> mm, okay. during the pandemic through my foundation writer's room. Because I was trying to do like a big old expo thing and then the pandemic, you know, came about. But I oh. did some um symposiums, informational stuff. Well, you know, people may ask for me to do it again, but I, I can't just do that shit all the time. But just right. the shit I've learned, the shit I'm still learning, you know, like you just don't know. Like when I, IEP, like I signed an IEP for the first time thinking this is a parent teacher meeting, not realizing that. This is how they get money, and they get money for your child having an IEP. And you don't even know what this shit says. Like I really didn't know until I got a friend of mine that actually knew about it, and was like, "No, I don't sign that shit. Like, take it home. I'm gonna tell you, you know." So I've just been trying to advocate for parents that don't know, you know. Yeah, and major. I just happen to be a parent that is able to, basically, for the last four or five years. I pay for everything out of pocket for my son. And then at the end of the school year, I go back and have them pay me back as mm-hmm. much as I can get. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Everyone can't do that. Right. But I do understand that there's other ways they can, you know, do it. They don't have to do it out of pocket. But if you don't know, you don't know. I didn't know. Right. And if so I didn't, you're- if once I knew... I could have still done it another way, but I'm like, I ain't going to do it that way. Cause I'm a, if this is all I could do with my money, I got, I'm going to do it. Cause I'm his right. number one advocate, you know? Right. So basically, a wonderful mom. Thing I got, I got to go to it that I don't care. Yeah. Like, 
Thank you, God. So if y'all yeah. want to see me doing shows and making albums, this is what the fuck I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Being a mother, which is <laughs> always day. number one. Yeah. That part. I was going to ask you, how do you balance your career and taking care of your son full time? It's not really a balance anymore because, again, thank you, God. But at the same time, um, I'm not, my career is, right now is not about being on the road or being in the studio. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually auditing everybody right now. <laughs> so, nice. <laughs> and I've been going through my, I do administrative stuff at home. Like I turn in on my own publishing stuff. I go through this shit with a fine tooth comb every day. Like this is yes. home. So, it's not. so that's what I've been doing. While right. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Owe me something and I want, I'd rather know what that is. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm just saying, that's what I'm doing. No, absolutely. No, that, that's people, that's amazing. Uh, y'all artists, artists out there, y'all need to start auditing y'all, y'all deals, man. Well, they don't want all, you to do that. You can't do that unless you know what the shit is. Like my daughter, right. for example, dope ass. Shout out to China. She's amazing. She's a writer, producer, singer, engineer. She does all her own shit, right? But she be walking through here and she see me. <laughs> With my computer and my little, I'm, I'm still a pen and paper girl. She said, Mom, I don't think most people do that. I said, they sure don't. But guess what? I do. Yeah. <laughs> so that makes you different. <laughs> yeah. Take a page so, from hey, Mama's book. They probably don't, but I do. <laughs> right. She be well, look at the, like, look oh at, God, you're doing that. Like, yes, I am. <laughs> you're doing On that. Page thing. number 155. <laughs> God. She said, Oh my I God, am. you're doing that again. <laughs> but so that's amazing. So yes. you're a full time mom, and that's what it is. And you were there for your son. And I absolutely love that. I really commend you on that, you know, because. I mean, some people I'm still a don't. I'm business person, but I do my business from home. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Let's not no, I get that. Like <laughs> no, I get that. What, <laughs> what, what if someone came around talking about a big tour? You know, Ooh. would you consider? What's that big money? Because no, takes- I mean, if big money was attached, like, period. Like, that that's. Part. Because it takes that, it takes me thinking about, okay, if I'm going to be away from home, like, can I take my son? If I take him, I need to take support for him. Right. He needs, to, you know what I mean. So I'm not really thinking about that like that. That's not my thought. Like, my thought is more so about him. Right. So a tour, yeah, okay, that's cute. Don't get me wrong, no shade. I love my fans. I love being able to do that. But you know, it gotta make sense. <laughs> okay, so we, we we talked about so much dope stuff, and I was trying to play a mini game, but it's cool. We won't play the mini game. Play the game. Let's keep... No, I want to play the game. Right, play the game. It's fun. Okay, it's fun, and you great. You got amazing. Talk person. about uh, Mr. Stevie J. I need we my get the... blunt for this game. Yeah, yeah, we. Yeah, you need yeah. your you, you gonna need your you gonna need your blunt before these Stevie J questions. No, nah, they're not. They're not crazy. Yeah, she, <laughs> this ain't heaven. Look, Faith, the realest chick. I know I did not know. answer some shit like bitch. Right, right, right. 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 You go, you, you go say plead the fifth if you need. If you I don't need to so, plead nothing. I don't have to pay nothing either. Uh, you, right. you, 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 you a little too Jersey for the interview. He's from right Jersey for real. You a little too Jersey for the interview right now. He is Jersey. Um, okay, so this 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 is a game. It's called. That's what I love about Jersey people. Called, y'all y'all so up front yeah. and like real about it. You know, ain't yeah. no sugar coating. you from me? I'm from Elizabeth. I'm right next to you, man. You don't fucking lie. I'm Haitian. I'm Haitian. I'm Haitian. Haitian, yes. I'm from oh, Elizabeth. My Come on, man. I got oh. my first tattoo in Elizabeth. <laughs> really? <laughs> Where you was on Broad Street or something? Yeah, I got it. In. Wow. Face tattoo of who? Your face tattoo. My oh, face, face tattoo. tattoo. I thought you said oh, face I tattoo. Like I'm like, oh, you was getting face tattoos. And That's my crazy. um, the big, the one that was on my chest. I got that in Elizabeth. Wow. I used to go right there to the. I used to go to fucking Shoppers World in Elizabeth. Right on Broad Street. That shit is still right there. there. That shit's still there. <laughs> Look at y'all. Crazy. She says you go to shop. So all my Eastwick listeners, you hear that? Faith Evans was in our hood going to Shoppers World and, and Bobby's. Did you go to Bobby's? Like really? 
I still love that man. Not you the shopping L- world, but I right. You in L.A., girl. You in L.A. You ain't, you ain't in the East Coast. I go home, I be where I be. Like I love it. <laughs> How can a man impress Faith Evans? Oh, my God. He is going to be funny. He's going to be charming. He's going to love. His spirit is have to resonate that there's God in him. Mm. But humor and all of that. Like, you know, it's not about a look. I'm definitely going to look down at the thing thing. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I don't see it, I think not about the look, but I'm like, definitely going to look down. I can't stop to set me up. Shut up. I ain't going to say it. <laughs> but no, I, somebody was trying to set me up on a date, and I didn't know it. I was just, like, hanging out with my homegirl. <laughs> and then <laughs> her friend that later on she told me, oh, I was thinking, and I was like, girl, and... I looked down, I was like, girl, no, never, never would I. <laughs> I don't see anything. I didn't see nothing. <laughs> he had a tight pants. <laughs> oh, boy. I what a turn off. He could have been a grower. That's he could have been off. a grower. A little dick is a fucking turn off for me. I heard he that. He could have been a grower. That, 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 that is a real thing. I don't believe in that. Yo, you can see it through the pants. Come on, that's a real Even if thing. It ain't through the pants, I don't believe in that grower. You this gotta fucking a, have this, something to grow. Hello, no, this is a this. So that's my kind of girl. I want to see something. Like I need to see something for it to get to the bigger part. Okay. <laughs> Look, you you could be you could be missing out on a blessing because you don't understand no, I'm not. the. Uh, <laughs> no, not that type of blessing. <laughs> Whoever watches this, if, if y'all can y'all, can y'all let her know, can y'all hey, let her know grow is exist. I ten pounds when she was born, so <laughs> that's my first child. Okay, yo, <laughs> you so yo, funny. Yo, you are yo. so funny. You are I'm hilarious. Listen. <laughs> We we gonna need Faith to do a little research on the growers. The growers. Com- <laughs> so- <laughs> you asked me about the motion. I'm like, no, bitch. Mm-hmm. I need to feel it already. <laughs> so <laughs> let's. Go. So it ain't. It's moving around. <laughs> it's the boat. It ain't. It ain't about the motion. It's the boat. So is the it safe? Got- is it safe to say? The boat. The boat gotta be. The boat gotta be a yacht, fellas. If you ain't yachting it. <laughs> Get out of the DMs. I don't care about them. I'm telling y'all with me. I don't care about them. I'm That's not what I'm saying. If y'all trying to get at faith, if y'all trying to get oh, at faith, you better be yachting. You better be yachting. We ain't doing no paddle boats up in here. I'm very good with not fucking nobody until right, right. the right person comes along. Oh, absolutely. I'm great with that. Like What's I the said, longest? I had enough dick as a teenager. Oh, God. What, what are you about to do? What's the longest you've waited to have sex? I don't know. I don't time it out. I've I know that I'm not a, I'm not tripping off a of set. Like right, you ain't you ain't you ain't a oh, oh we gonna get it popping first first night type of type of gal. Is that what you're saying? Oh, well, the first night me and Big actually went out. We definitely fucked, and we was wow. Together. You we're just like, like this one over here, Hello. two pieces in a pot. <laughs> when you know, you know. What was yeah. it about? First time we were around each other, but when we actually went out, yeah. Right, right. He what was it about, me. Biggie? You was like, I'm giving him the draws tonight. Well, no, he la- he laughed. He made you laugh. And I didn't know he was, you know, like, dope like that. And I'm looking at him. And he was like, everybody's like, where you going? He was like, I'm going with her. <laughs> That's so, so dope. Me. You was like, yep, my coochie getting wet tonight. Okay. <laughs> be, be, be respectful. This is an icon. You, you, get, you get to keep closing. This is before that. This is way before that. Oh, you talking about me or him? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you. Very in the beginning. like You're the icon. No, you guys are. No, I don't no, know no. I was talking about big at the time, so I didn't right. know who you were referring to. Okay, so so you y- you bomb her game. Let let's try my game. My game might be a little bit easier. Okay, we gonna have I some play any game you want to. We go we gonna have some popular marriages. Okay, I just need to know the first word that comes to mind when I That's say these word. marriages. When I, I'm a, I'm gonna just say a couple. Like if I say Neek and Shar, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Fun. Will Smith and Jada Pinkett. 
rich. <laughs> Jay-Z and Beyonce. Richer. Okay, no. Uh, uh, just, no, Jeff is rich, should I, I say. <laughs> You yes, 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 gonna say that? Yes, you can't be using the same words now. We gotta, we gotta okay. get a little creative. We get a little creative. All right. Popular um, and rich. Popular, <laughs> popular and rich. Okay. <laughs> Ti and Tiny. My niggas. Mm. Love it. Um, Gabrielle Unit and Dwayne Wade. Important. Okay. Kevin Hart and Aniko. Oh shit. I mean, I don't really know them, but he funny as hell. <laughs> like, right? <laughs> That's the first minute. He funny as um, hell. Usher and Tamika. I know Tamika before she was with Usher. Right. Because she um, was a stylist. Yeah, but my ex-husband Todd actually knew, worked, knew her from, you know, Oakland and He's from LA, so. Oh, that's cool. Well, I don't know. I love Tamika's book, though. I just read it. Y'all should get it. It's good. I'll give it to, we'll take it out. Okay, two more, two more. Tony Braxton and Birdman. Shit, I didn't even know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, what you late. You lying. My friends call me Granny because I go to bed at 8 o'clock, so. <laughs> Granny be in bed, child. Right, we, we, we way past 8 right now. So what you think about Tony Braxton and Birdman? I never she knew said, that she was didn't know. a thing. I didn't really. Okay, okay. Now that I think about it, maybe I saw it, but you know, I don't know. You thought it was fake. I don't think anything about people's shit. I ain't in people's business. No, that's why That's why I had to do this, because we'll never hear you. Whatever we'll never works. hear you talk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what you about this one? Until you said it. Um, Neil Long and, um, e- I forgot how to pronounce his name. I, 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 Ime. Ime Udoku. Ime Udoku. Udoku. That's the coach that... Uh, it got to be one word? Yeah, oh, one word. word a few, few, few words is fine. few words is fine. Current situation that's in the news. Like, that's their business. I don't know. They okay, obviously okay. had a great thing, so I don't know. <laughs> okay, last one. Stevie, J and Faith Evans. What are the words that come to mind? <laughs> 